Hey YouTube, Mike here. How are we all doing today? I hope we all had a safe and productive week. All right, today's video, we're going to be going over regulators. Different regulators, how to install them, and how to vent them. Um, again, like I've mentioned before, I do or I'll s jump into other videos when I get a load of other questions, a load of questions on them. All right, and then when this video is done, I have the first uh, of probably two announcements that's gonna be happening with this channel, okay? And I think it's gonna be pretty exciting. All right, so what do we have here? What I have here is I have two of uh, pretty much my most popular regulators that we use. The Pietro Florentine, which I know I have sent this to you, some, a lot of years. The F31052-2BP, 3 three quarter inch. And here I'll let you see that. Get a quick screenshot. I will be putting everything in the comments below. This is pretty much our go-to regulator. Why? Because you could use it for propane and natural gas at two pounds in and inches out. It's eight to 13 inches out, two pounds in. But if you bring it outside the house, not inside, you could run a five pound system and into it with eight to 13 out. So that is pretty much our main go-to regulator because majority of my business here is natural gas. All right, the second regulator which we use here, and let me get the box, is a Rego LV4403Y46R. Okay, this is our second regulator. And the reason that we use this regulator, as you can see, now, this is Mark 2 pounds, but I'll explain in a second. It's half inch in and three quarter out. Why? Because we would be bringing a gas line under the ground, would a valve here up into this regulator, and it's half inch, it would be 10 pounds. Now, we, you can't put 10 pounds or five pounds in a house. Here in Florida, you can do five pounds commercial, but other than that, it's two pounds inside the house. So it would be 10 pounds feeding the regulator. Then we would reduce it, say, to two pounds, which this regulator is, and then into the house to, say, the other side of the house to the tankless. Then we would maybe put, if this was a garage wall, we would put one of these regulators inside to go from two pounds to inches, and then that would go to, say, the stove, the dryer, the fireplace, maybe the barbecue, so, so on and so forth. But this could be a line that one has to go directly either to the second tankless on the other side of the house, a generator, or a pool heater. So it'll, serp it'll serpentine through the rafters over to the other side. So, the other pretty much, re uh, another more popular regulator that we use, all right, is a Simmons regulator, three quarter in, three quarter out, two pounds in, inches out, and this is also eight to 13. But this regulator has a bigger orifice in it. So right here in this body, right here, there is an orifice, just like you would have on, you know, a gas engine or um, a stove, a dryer, but in this thing, it's going to be a bigger orifice. And in this one here, we have, it's a green spring, and it has a five, excuse me, a half inch orifice. The reason that we go to this one for generators. Generators take a lot of gas. And there's also a specific distance that the regulator has to be from that appliance. And we're going to go over that in a second. But one of these regulators, a Pietro, or even one of these regulators, 
will not provide enough gas to that appliance. And with a generator, yeah, because the generators are like almost 500,000 BTUs or better. Okay, a regulator also that we use, you know, every now and then, but the reason we don't like to use these is just because of the way it discolors outside. This is a Maxitrol. Both of these regulators are Maxitrols. Okay, this is an inch and a half Maxitrol. So this would be used, like, say, behind a stove, to, uh, excuse me, a commercial stove line. So like in the back of a restaurant where there's six stoves, fryers, stuff like that. Inch and a half in, inch and a half out, two pounds in, inches out. So this has what they call a vent limiter on it. So if it goes inside the house, this would go on, or inside the building, this would go on, and it would just limit vent limiter, limit the amount of gas that expels out when one side of the diaphragm gets a little overpressurized than the other. But it also brings air in to equalize the pressure inside the diaphragm so that this regulator will work. And then behind this, which I'll take it off in a minute, is the adjustment. We're not going to get into adjustments because you need to have a manometer on the appliance in order to adjust the system correctly. But behind these, the in here, and here, this one actually has a plunger that holds the spring down, and the adjustment screw is right there. It's a very large flathead screw, or some of them have a very large Allen key. And all of them have vents, and we're going to get into this venting in a minute. Again, you have the adjustment, vent, then you have your adjustment. But this Pietro Florentine it is so versatile that that's why it's pretty much like the regulator we use the most. This has a, what they call an outdoor rain head on it. It actually screws into threads inside of this. Now, if this went inside the house, you would take one of these vent limiters, but smaller. This is a 3.8. This is quarter. You would screw this in, and now you have a vent limiter. It is that inside. And you can, actually, if you shake it, you'll actually hear there's a little ball in there that it'll expel the gas, and then the ball, it's like a check. It'll shut down. So. If this is going to simulate an outside um, regulator setup, you would put one of these rain heads on it. Now, when we buy these regulators, we buy them with the rain head or the weather head and a vent limiter. So we always have way extra pieces on the truck. Because, again, you put these inside with a vent limiter and you get an obstruction over the vent limiter. The regulator will not work correctly. Okay? All right. So now, placement of regulators. Regulators, it is very important that you place a regulator at the proper distance from the appliance. Now, we're talking tankless heaters. <clears throat> this regulator, and this is the tankless right here. So that is the three-quarter male fitting that's coming out of the bottom. That is the test port. Then you have your T with your drip leg, and then a nice nipple and elbow to angle it down. This is three foot six inches away from that regulator. Now, don't look at this T. So when you look, when I zoom in, that T is only there to hold the regulator in place. This is the feed right here. So you have your valve that controls the flow. If you have any problem, you can shut this off. You can disassemble the regulator or disassemble the tankless through this union right here. So you have your valve that controls the flow. And you notice all these Apollo ball valves, the Combracos, if you put them in, they miss the regulator. They will miss, you don't have to bend the handle. That's perfect, right down, that's how we put them. All right, you're three foot six inches away. Again. 
you want to be a minimum of 36 inches. And that's why for those of you that I've set up your installs, I've told you by your T, your cap, your elbow, a couple of elbows, your valve, a full port ball valve, and a 36 inch, three quarter inch full flow gas flex. Because from wherever, say your valve or your T, excuse me, your regulator, to the um, nipple and elbow, you will be over 36 inches away because that flex is 36 inches. Okay. So, in this case, with this regulator, the Pietro, the vent head here, or the, or the weather head, is adequate for venting. Now, venting a regulator, the code is that you have to be at least five foot from a source of ignition. So, on every regulator, you have some type of vent. Now, on this regulator, there would be a vent limiter on it. But this is one eighth of an inch. So you would need something like this to adapt to this. and then run the vent out. Some larger equipment have what they call gas trains, where there is another regulator, another, like a, it'll be like a third stage. There'll be another vent on it. You cannot tie these vents in together unless you make a massive pipe. So in New York, when we did these big, huge commercial boilers, minimum was four vents. Some of them had six, seven, eight vents. We had to run eight, lines outside the building from the boiler room and that's the way it always looked one eighth inch nipple with a one eighth by three quarter bushing that as you this is as old as what we i still had in stock in my shop here in florida this was from new york but then we had a, we used to do it all in metal pipe here you could do it in in electrical gray conduit and then i have a female adapter by a socket and then you would run your vent here on this one, you would unscrew, this is 3.8, you would unscrew the vent limiter, and then you would put, and the only 3.8 nipple I had was chrome, so it would be a real fancy job. So you would put a 3.8 nipple, now you can't run this 3.8, you have to increase this to a minimum of 3 quarter. If you have to go 60, 70 feet, you're bringing this to 1 inch. But in all case purposes, you're pretty much, if you're in a basement or if you're in a utility room, you're just going to go up and out the room or you can go up and down under the house and out the house. So you're not going to be 60, 70 feet away. Three quarter is more than enough. But on the big regulator, I'll show you something in a second. So three eight by three quarter bushing. Now, let me just put this back on so I don't lose it. Now, I'm going to do this regulator first, then I'll get into the Simmons. All right, let me grab what I need. I have my pipe, and I have my other elbow, and I have my other male adapter. Okay, as you see, this is what we use. Now, you can, three quarter PVC elbows can be used. The reason that the electrical is used is for two reasons. One, if this was on the side of a house and it's most likely going to be like 30 inches above the ground, we actually would go down and we would dig like eight inches in the ground, bring this over five feet, six, seven, eight feet away, and then up to the vent head, which I'll show you in a second. But you can use the P, like if you wanted to come straight down and put a regular PVC elbow, that's fine because it's under the ground. But if you come up out of the ground to make the vent head or to do, show you what I'm going to do later, you have to paint that fitting gray. Okay, but if you just get these that have a female on one side or a male on the other, they also make couplings that you can coupling them together all you got to do is put some glue on it 
You don't need to prime it, just glue it. All right, so on this, you have, and I'll take, when I take that one off, you'll see it. There is a screen in here, and that screen prevents bugs from getting in there. And so as you can see, it's painted blue. There is a screen in there. That's up in here. And like I said, when I take that down, when I take it, I'll bring it over to the camera better. That is a three-quarter inch female thread. That's going to get a male adapter. Okay? Now, we're going to make believe we're going in the ground because I have boxes set up to make the pipe nice and level for you. Now you're going to put your pipe and elbow like that. So just say if that was in the ground, you're going to come up there. Um, now, <clears throat> you can either buy this They're about three fifty, four dollars. It is. It's got a three quarter inch female elbow with the screen. This is a vent head made. You can buy them. They're like three, four bucks. And what you would do is put your male adapter in there. Put your elbow. And I happen to have five feet of gray pipe. See, it's the electrical conduit, nothing fancy. And like I said, this, if this is going in the ground, you could do it with PVC. It's in the ground, UV light will not, see, this pipe UV light won't affect. So anything out of the ground, it won't affect it. But if you paint it, you'll be fine. And that's sometimes what we do. We keep 100 feet of this in stock. We keep a ton of elbows, male adapted straps, you name it, we, we carry it. And then... Oh, look at that. I happen to have a perfect box there. And then there is your vent. See? That's it right there. So that would be, that's act, that pipe is actually, to give you an idea, Six feet away. Six feet away. That's what that is. And there's, that's how it would look. Now, if you wanted to, and your customer didn't mind, you could break it back to, you know, go down low, break it back to the wall, strap it on the wall. If the customer didn't mind, if there was old pool equipment, wiring, you're going to run it past all that, that's fine. But, you need to be, let me just take this little thing off. I don't want to break that in there. That is my one regulator we keep for when we do the commercial kitchens. Okay, you need to be at least five feet away from a source of ignition. You need to be five feet away from a door or a window. And that window is something, if it's a glass block window, if it's a window that doesn't open, you don't need it. But if they open the window, this regulator expels gas. It goes into the window, goes into the door. So you got to be five feet away. I mean, in actuality, you know, you might be going this way, this way. It don't, you got to look, look at your job. So when that regulator outside, now you, you just say there's no ignition, there's no windows, no ignition, no windows. No ignition, no windows. No ignition, no windows. But there is ignition. Tankless. The tankless is electric. So, you still got to run that away. All right? So, again, five, at least five feet away. We try to go at least eight feet. And most of the time, it's the house, the regulator, the tankless. Because we always like to bring that regulator right near the tankless. We put a T right there, and then go in the house, and then over to the tankless. These regulators also, actually, no, I'm sorry, this one does not have it. 
there's some of these uh, Rego regulators that actually have two quarter inch caps and there's a plate that you can buy an aluminum plate it comes with two like copper or brass bolts it's wrought like half inch and you bolt them in and they got multiple holes and you lag them into the wood so it holds this regulator nice and tight okay now on re regulators depending on the BTU value of the regulator the vent will be bigger and in this case this one's going to be a little pain in the neck to take out here a second there we go okay and in this case this one is one inch so the larger BTU value the bigger the vent okay so since this one is going to handle a lot more BTUs it requires a one inch vent so again these regulators would be sitting like this or like this depending on the direction of flow we would then go in the ground and then away from the generator now regulators this regulator as you can see is a 90 degree in from the bottom out through the back they call them back mount this is through that's through that's through that's through this regulator has to be mounted like this it can be mounted like this or this not like this it can be mounted like that this regulator or this regulator or that regulator this or that not like this not like this not like this not like that like this or like that period no exceptions make it up and make it up in the direction that you're gonna leave it now arrow Look at the arrows. This is going up. This is going up. This is going up. That's going in that direction. On these regulators, the outlet side has the vent. But, when you're doing, and let me grab my marker, a little unprepared today, I knew I needed a marker, on these regulators, just like I say on my check valves, I make another arrow here, and then on the top, I make an arrow, to show me the direction. So I know that I don't have to keep looking. Some of these, and I'll show you. Look at that little tiny arrow there. You know, that's the arrow. <laughs> my glasses are my eyes. Yeah. The arrow, it's not even an arrow. There's the, the quills on the bottom and the point at the top. There's not even something in the middle. So mark it. Mark those arrows and watch the way you place the regulator. That is very important. And for a rule of thumb, like um, of tankless, pool heater, water heater, boiler, uh, fireplace, outdoor stuff like that, even in indoor. You're running two pounds and you come up the back of a fireplace and you're going to go in. You want to be three feet away on a generator and 
Most of them are going to be Genrac and Kohler. You could you could do a, um, a cat or you know um, generator. If it's a small house generator, six seven feet away. But we did a seven and a half million BTU generator, and I thought nine feet away was going to work, and it didn't. We had to move it twelve feet away for it to work. Now. On large equipment like that, you might have, say, 10 pounds feeding this. And it could be, say, inch and a quarter. But the generator is two inch. You're going to get the size regulator for the size of the inlet of the appliance. Even though this is going to be registering at, say, 10 pounds, 5 pounds coming into the regulator, you need that full pipe. So we needed 12 feet of two inch pipe to get to that generator. So you, that's the, you don't put an inch and a quarter regulator and increase it here. You put a two inch regulator and, and then go to it. So you increase it here. Same thing. If you had say three quarter or half inch feeding this at say five, 10 pounds, but your, your appliance is three quarter three-quarter regulator, three-quarter to that large appliance. All right? So, again, that's the little cap. Oh, let me show you what I was saying now. You can actually take a fitting, like this elbow if you wanted to, and take some PVC glue and glue that in. Now, I would also clean off all that paint. Get that paint cleared off. That's what we do. We scratch all this paint. We use the vent heads, but we save these. Sometimes, oh, God, we don't have one. If you don't have one, you can't leave this open. You know, you, this is going to end up being a little condo for bugs. Glue. Just glue that on with some PVC glue. Hold it there. Let it sit for while you're doing the job. And when you're done, it'll be nice and glued for you. Or if you happen to carry super glue, we have super glue on the truck. We super glued it. But just get it on. You could use uh, silicone and then just, you know, clamp it on, put some tape on it, put it over, you know, on your work, in your work area. And by the time you're done with the job, it'll be nice and glued on and you can put it in. But I would highly recommend these vent heads. These are the cat's meow. And like I said, they're a couple of bucks. And they, and they make your job look real professional. So. All right, so that's that with regulators. Again, make sure that your regulator for the tankless heater is at least three feet away from the appliance, from that tankless, and the unit will work perfectly. These are great. See how it just snapped in? These things we love because, again, like I said, we have a propane tank, say, 30 feet away. We dig 30 feet. We come up. We bring a riser up over there. We bring a riser here. We already have our hole drilled going into the house. We make up a valve, then a galvanized nipple. Remember, your riser actually could be used as a union to take it apart. Also, this here is a union half. Just be careful. If you're backing something off on this, this will unscrew. I never touch these things. I just leave them alone. And then we just make everything up, push it into the house, we use the back plate. If not, there'll be a T here. And we go to the tankless. Everything's nice and strapped to the wall. And we're done. Now, when you're testing your system, if you have to when you test your system, if you test a system that's underground, it's like 10 pounds. Most code states that propane is 10 pounds under the ground. You can run inches. You can't, but it's 10 pounds under the ground. So we test it at 20 pounds. If the house line going into the house is a two pound system, we test it at 10 pounds. If it's an inches system, we test it at 10 pounds. But inches has nothing to do with what I'm going to explain right now. When you do your pressure test for the inspection by the plumbing inspector or the mechanical inspector, you cannot have the regulator. The regulator cannot test at that great pressure. Remember, these, this regulator is rated for 10 pounds in. 
But once you go up, you're gonna, it's gonna come out the vent, you can mess up the diaphragm. So we have to actually leave two nipples in a union, pressure test it multiple stages, get it witnessed, then we come back, take out the union and the nipples, and then splice in the regulator with two nipples in a union. And then paint it all up with the gray paint. So just be careful not to test the system with the regulator on it or you're going to blow it. All right? All righty. Um, again, all of this stuff will be in the description below. I know most of you are going to be very interested in this Pietro Florentine regulator. It comes with, um, all regulators come with an instruction sheet. And all propane regulators come with these stickers that give you the model number, serial number, and the BTU value, spring range, and the outlet inlet and outlet pressure. So what we end up doing, even though we, and this regulator will be marked, it will be, it's already marked two pounds, so you know that it's two pounds going out, so if you have to tap into it, you know you need another regulator. We affix this to the pipe, okay? So all regulators come with that. All right, um, so that's that. Again, valve, regulator. Now, it could be one of these, like just say you only have a tankless. You can get this regulator, which is a straight through three quarter, and that would go here if you had 10 pounds coming up out of the ground. But if you have two pounds or under, you know, if you have, excuse me, two pounds going to inches, this Pietro, this end could be natural gas or propane. This regulator will handle it. It's designed for both. All right. Now, what's going to happen? All right. I am going to be starting a website. This is going to be a multi-stage um, transition since I, I do at least 70 comments and messages a day maybe more and you know all of you that I have talked to and communicated with those of you that have followed me I mean it's 10,600 subscribers on a lookup channel so what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be starting a website and the website I'm, I'm, I'm trying, I'm researching a name for the website and I'm going to be changing the name of the channel. I'm not going to be the Renai guy anymore. Now, I am not getting away from Renai. I am so embedded with them and with the product. I am not leaving them. The reason that I'm changing the name, we'll go through that first, <clears throat> is that there's other products that I, sp when I speak to a lot of you, and if those of you that follow me and know what I'm talking about, I speak to you when, you, when I talk to you on the phone or message you. I tell you about these other products. And why I don't show them on my channel is because they're not a Renai product or they have nothing to do with Renai. But sometimes you need another product. And this other product, and I'm just going to give you an example, it's called the Taco or the Metland demand pump system. And it's when, and I get, I would say at least three or four of these questions a week, if not more. Oh my God, I just found your channel and I had an RU199 installed. And I wish I saw your channel, I would have had the RUR. Can I put a thermal bypass valve in? No, you can't you need to run a dedicated recirc line. It's impossible, my house is finished. Okay, call me. You call me, I speak to him. All right, buy, and I give him the model number, I tell him where to look for it, and he looks up on the computer right there. A Taco demand pump system. It's a thing that goes underneath the sink. You push a button, it circulates the water, it'll work with Renai, it'll work with any, it won't, it won't hurt any of the warranty, but I've never shown it but I need to show it. So 
I've actually were in communication with Taiko and they're sending me a product. I saw my channel and they're sending me a product. I want to show that product. I want to show um, like track piping and, and, and other things. You know, if you, if you need to hook up a small water heater for um, storage water, I, I, you know, put in a bigger Renai unit. No, there's another way to do it. And I don't think I'm doing justice to my subscribers by not being able to show this. So I am now going to be showing other things on this channel that has to do with tankless heaters. Now, let me just go to one more thing and then I'll mention about the website. A few months ago, I was contacted by a gentleman who's the head of the, I think it's called the International Home Inspectors Association. And he asked me to do a one hour, he loved my channel, the association loved the channel, he invited me to do a one hour talk for inspectors for a meeting where they get their CU credits. Well, I, I set up with my youngest daughter's boyfriend, computer guy, he did my, he put photos on and, and I did a one hour presentation to 167 inspectors. And then we had a question and answer at the end for like 15 minutes. Well, it went over great. They loved it. I ended up with like 127 subscribers within a day or two. And, and it grew through the week. Well, now I've been invited back. But they want me to do it. And they're going to actually um, pay me for it. Two hours. I'm going to be doing it in about a month and a half. It'll be a two-hour presentation at 1 o'clock. I think it's April 30th. Um, at one o'clock, I'll be doing a two-hour presentation with um, uh, on Zoom with photos. But I'll be touching on like water softeners, you know, what uh, descalers for it, uh, rotted pipe and stuff like that. And that's what I want to be able to show on this channel. Everything that you're going to run into, and everything that you possibly um, could run into, looking at one of these or troubleshooting. So onto the website what I'm gonna do is I'm going I'm researching a name and I'm going to start a website where I'm going to be posting like one hour or better videos on and you could subscribe to this for a yearly fee and you'll get access to the whole gamut of videos and I'm actually going to be looking for a professional studio to bring all my equipment, my lighting, my props, everything, to another to a, a, another shop, where I can do these videos, post them on the website, post my other videos on um, YouTube, and then you'll be able to see pretty much everything. Now, I also have a Patreon. Now, I never mentioned this to people, and I didn't do it, but. A lot of this stuff I purchase myself. Now, yes, most of this stuff, it comes off the truck, but a lot of the things that I purchase, I purchase through my, my own. And I spend a lot of time, like 20 to 30 hours a week, between messaging, uh, talking, setting up, and doing the videos. As you know, I don't edit, because I like real time, I like you to see everything. Not to fast forward through it and like, oh my God, what'd you just do? No, I don't like that. And I don't like watching it. So that's why I, I really don't edit. <clears throat> so um, I'm going to be posting my Patreon in the description. And, you know, anybody that wants to subscribe to the Patreon would be greatly appreciated. It'll help out the channel. Like I, I am literally looking for another camera. I did get a new camera, which I'm... I'm uh, photo you know I'm videoing on right now but I need to get a b-roll camera so I can do two different things with with the camera so um, that is part one of what's happening again I am not getting away from Renai um, I will be doing uh, two other tanklesses and that's going to be part two when I announce that like I said, I'm working in phases to do this. The channel has taken off. 
Again, like I said, it's like 70 people a day. And I try to answer. For those of you that I haven't answered, I will answer you. And I apologize. It's just a lot of work. Um, again, the tool is still for sale. Um, you can message us and I'll message you back on pricing. And um, that's the filter removal tool. You can go back in a back video and see it. Um, you can uh, purchase that. Then they will always be for sale. I'm, I'm in the works right now of finding someone that could actually manufacture them in a good quantity for me. But again, material uh, lacking and pricing. So, you know, I can't make these things a hundred bucks. So, um, I, and I got to do this on my, you know, my time off when I, I'm able to do it because we are just like unbelievably busy. So, all right, everything will be in the description below. If you have a question, email me. My email will be in the description below. And I hope you enjoyed the video. And again, I got to say thank you to all of those comments. Um, and if you can, <clears throat> and if I help you in any way, send Renai, call Renai, or call, send them a, a, um, uh, an email. That would be also greatly appreciated. But a nice comment is always greatly appreciated. And again, I'm blown away by um, uh, those comments. Thank you very much. I greatly appreciate it. All right, YouTube. You'll be safe out there. Enjoy installing your endless hot water. And I'll see you on the next video. Bye-bye now.